Hello and welcome to another episode of The Chain, a series where one episode links to another by any means. Um, could be director, composer, actor, subject matter, uh, genre, really could be anything. It's been pretty straightforward so far, mostly actors and directors. Um, last week we had a uh, look at The Ride to Dubno from Taras Bulba by Franz Waxman. Uh, this week, uh, linking via Yul Brenner, uh, the actor, um, we are looking and we're taking another ride, uh, a ride of a different type, with The Magnificent Seven, um, which is our first uh, link involving Elmer Bernstein. So I'm really pleased to be tackling a score by him. Um, now, uh, as usual, I've created myself a template so we can get cracking pretty quickly. Um, this is going to be a bit of an interesting one for me because um, the score I've got, I haven't actually um, been able to find matching audio for it. Um, it is a reconstruction score. And I suspect that is because um, as a 1960 um, MGM film, that the original manuscript has actually been lost. Um, uh, you may not be aware, but in 1970, uh, somebody at MGM was having a bit of a clear out and decided to throw all of the music manuscripts away. Um, it's been um, colloquially known as the MGM Holocaust. Um, and unfortunately, it means that any score from before 1970 is more than likely gone forever. Um, so this uh, this can be quite interesting to see uh, what I've actually got here. <laughs> um, but uh, without further ado, I can bring up my template, bring up the chat window so I can see if anyone's actually out there. Hello, Joseph. Good to see, see you're there. Um, at least I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> so this is going to be an interesting one. Um, it's pretty straightforward orchestration. Um, the original orchestration was by Jack Hayes, who you might recognise from uh, various James Horner projects and Leo Shukin. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a fun one. It's quite a long um, piece, but it is typeset. Um, although in quite a funny way, so um, I might be able to make some reasonable progress, we'll have to see. Without further ado though, I'm going to crack on. It's quite interesting that um, Elmer wrote this piece to try and um, bring some uh, pace into the film. He said there was a lot of kind of downtime and uh, it's quite a slow pace to the film. And so this certainly does add. That's quite a rousing theme, isn't it? This is a concert arrangement of some sort. Let's see. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, always on point with the title fonts, if I can be. It's the little things, you know. Uh, is that working? 
I do have fun with this, uh, picking out the fonts and that, as you know. <laughs> oh no, what's going on with YouTube now? Not. Let me know if it's going all rubbishy again, please. It's giving me warnings that it's not receiving enough data. So just getting in there with the fun fact. Actually, that that is one that I um, was aware of. I, I noticed that um, he actually has a writing credit on this. Um, that's quite cool. Seven Samurai is a good film. An iconic little opening for this queue. I had someone on Facebook actually ask, uh, I don't know if Charlie's actually here, um, whether I would be doing um, The Great Escape next week. I would like to, um, however, I don't have any manuscript for it. Um, so unfortunately I can't do that one um, but there are so many links from this um, that what I've actually decided I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow I'm going to um, put up the first round of if what is effectively like a, a voting um, tournament so the first bracket and um, you know, so there's so many options that are significant scores. So I'm going to do that head to head for each one, and then we'll gradually whittle it down to the final two, um, and decide before the weekend. So I think that'll be a bit of fun. Um, right. Okay. So. It was quite funny. I haven't seen this film in so long um, that I didn't realise until I was having a look through Eli um, Wallach. I recognised more from The Holiday, um, where um, he plays, uh, you know, it's quite an elderly gentleman in that movie. That's quite cool. Yeah, I haven't got anything from Superman 3, sorry. Um, yeah, I've never seen anything from, from Ken's um, music. I've been working on um, Independence Day and the 
I've discovered that there's a plugin that's available that will count the number of notes. Um, <laughs> so, um, the last queue that I worked on, that I've completed, had uh, over 11,500 notes. So I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm really interested to see now how many are in the full score when I finished it. That's a three minute queue. <laughs> That's a lot of notes. Action queue, obviously. Right, okay, we've got a bit. Variation here, so we've got Tower Inferno is uh, one of the ones that will go into the the um, brackets that I'm doing. There's four I've got for Steve McQueen. Um, I have um, Towering Inferno, Papillon, the Reavers, and the Sand Pebbles. And so just him alone, there's four great scores there. Yeah, it's a shame that um, I can't include the Great Escape as well because um, those five would be amazing. And so, yeah, it's a shame. All I've got for that is um, a sort of you know, uh, relatively simplified concert arrangement. I don't really want to do that. So. Thank you. 
the score I've got seems to be what you would produce if you were making a part set. So every instrument has got its own line, which um, is a bit weird to try and read as a sort of conducting or study score. So quite nice to put this together on one. Uh, this is uh, transposing the score if you didn't oh I think I might have deleted it by accident uh, um, put that back in a minute out there. Sounds familiar. Sounds um, very bottom heavy. <laughs> it's just going to be interesting to see how that goes. actually going to make a difference. Hello mate, how you doing? Good to see you. Hope you enjoyed the musical. Fun fact. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Robert Vaughan was in the um, TV version of The Magnificent Seven as well. I think he played the judge. And I'm just going to copy paste a bit here, I think. Save some time. Um, what have I got? One, two, three, F sharp with a T above. Corn four is on D with T above. Oops. Um, trumpet two and three is on A. Yes, indeed, about Battle Beyond the Stars, and that's another one I'm hoping to add into the tournament. Um, so there's going to be there's going to be some killer scores, and it's going to be a real tough decision to whittle it down to one to do next week. the way my YouTube thing keeps flicking in the background, suggesting that my video is going off. Is it, is it staying pretty um, stable for you guys, or is it just a hot mess? This is a real weird arrangement, because um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's um, just looking at it, it feels like this is going to be a lot heavier than my memory of it goes. Um, yeah should have a real kind of bounce to it. But with that bass drum, is it? Hmm. Well, we'll see. Um, right, so we've got cello is denied. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Let's go bracket it. Is that not dividing that? Um, so top plays both those nodes, bottom plays the E flat. Mm. Yeah, I don't have any material for um, bullet, unfortunately. Um, Lalo's score, yeah, couldn't find. Um, or Lalo. Um, yeah, Zimmer's birthday today. So um, maybe next week should be uh, the holiday, which has... Uh, actor from this movie. Um, yeah, I know, I know. And this is in Germany. Um, where is... So, right. Do, do. Cheating a little bit. Well, not cheating, just trying to save as much time as I can. Um. There's um there is a Zimmer queue, it doesn't really relate to this, but there's one that I started working on some time ago that I would like to get round to doing on the chain at some point so I can finish it um, just because um, like during my early years of appreciating film scores um, I really enjoyed this one and it's the trains cue from the peacemaker Sounds like it's going to be really muddy, but I'll be happily proved wrong. Um. 
This is really hard. I'm re reading across multiple staves to try and do this. I should just do one line at a time, shouldn't I? <laughs> More trivia. Um, for those of us who are fans of Bruce Lee, oh no, I didn't. Didn't know that. That's um, that's pretty cool actually. Um, then, uh, yes.
as I say, very confusing score to read. Just making sure I'm not screwing it up. No. Um, so, three continues. It's really <laughs> that line. Three, two is there. Two is there. That's right. Right. in, I think. Oh, 
Hiya Donny, nice to see you. Do I have a favourite Western film? Hmm. <laughs> um, tricky. I haven't seen all that many. Um, and it'll be revealing <laughs> if I say which ones I have. Um, hmm. uh, I like um, Tombstone. And I'm forgiven. I haven't really seen, I haven't watched the Spaghetti Westerns yet, the Sergio Leone's. I know I should have, but I haven't. Um, uh, I like some of the more kind of um, popcorn-y ones as well, like um, The Quick and the Dead. Um, and Back to the Future 3, you can count that as a Western. Of course you can. This is, uh, I hope that's right as well. Either. Ah, oh, cool. <laughs> I think my introduction to Bernstein was um, Ghostbusters. Um, but, uh, yeah. Speaking of Bernstein, although not Elmo, uh, I noticed that um, John Williams was in New York recording West Side Story today uh, with the New York Philharmonic. Cowboys and Aliens. Yeah, I've seen that. I wouldn't call it my favourite. <laughs> Uh, Mask of Sorrow. I love the Mask of Sorrow. Score and film. Um, what am I doing? Um, tuba. Checking tuba. Dirty. Because that is how it's meant to be. I have a horrible feeling this is going to sound really heavy so when I do the playback, so I apologise in advance if it is. Um, it just seems really densely orchestrated and I don't remember the original sounding like that. Especially this, I mean, oh no, it's because I'm reading the wrong line. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, I don't normally put key signature on timpani, but um, because it's in this score, I don't want to get any wrong accidentals that are not put in because of the key signature. So I've got that in for the moment, which I will take out when I do editing. Oh god, I just keep reading the wrong line. It, because everything has got its own line on this, um, own staff, every instrument has its own staff, um, it doesn't have the usual breaks that make it obvious which section you're looking at. You know? um, so it's actually really odd to look at. It's like one continuous mass of music. Um, all right, let's try this again then.
we got that time frame note that means fine. Yeah, what really? No. Case where it's just quick to type it in and copy it across and edit it. It's nice and learned. Okay, that was a bit of a time saver. Um, of course, because the, the strings are laid out like they would normally be, it's the wind which is normally grouped on multiple, multiple instruments on one star. And when it all split out, it just makes it a real pig to read. Um, bam, okay.
Oh goodness, here goes nothing. <laughs> All right. Seems a little bit denser than I was expecting, but not as bad as I was expecting either. Okay. Right. Straightforward enough. Okay. It's going to be a horrible place to stop when I play it back, isn't it? Right in the middle of that phrase. <laughs> Okay, that's all nice and straightforward. So uh, it's got the upper woodwind then, okay. And then, okay.
that's nice and straightforward. Lots of copying. so much easier to work out the intervals when they're actually on the same staff like this rather than <laughs> across two staves because you input chords in Sibelius by the interval if you're using the QWERTY keyboard like me anyway um, so I have to make sense of synth Sometimes. Is this some kind of concert arrangement of a theme? Yes, I think so. Almost certainly. Um, although it's not one you can, what I'm working from is not physically what you can buy unless some. No, it's just, it couldn't be because. Um, it's a part score. All the parts are on their individual staves. One on the soundtrack has this other intro passage after the verse you last. That is a lot quieter. Yeah. Probably. Almost certainly this is a concert arrangement. But uh, as I was saying, you might not have been in the room at the time. Um, as this is a 1960 MGM score, um, the manuscript will have been thrown in the bin in 1970 when they had a, a moment of madness and they cleared out the whole music library.
Turkey. Let's just listen to that. <laughs> it sounds so unbalanced until you get everything in there. Um, but yeah, no iffy notes, which is good. From a score spacing, transposing um, helps sometimes. Um, I'm actually, you know, I'm working on Independence Day at the moment. That manuscript is a transposing score, um, which I'm entering as a transposing score, but then I'm switching to concert, and I'm not finding any major spacing issues with that. Um, but sometimes you really can with a concert score. Um, so we'll see. Um, it's pretty standard for film score to be in C these days, in the concert score. can buy a concert arrangement of this. Um, it's published by Hal Leonard uh, on their Symphonic Pops label, um, which is arranged by Patrick Russ, Pat Russ. Um, but I haven't seen that manuscript, and I don't know if this is related to that. But this is not the, the actual score you can purchase. Um, as I said, I'm working from a part score, so it's uh, fun to work from. Um, so, um, what have we got here? One, two, seven. So I can put the intervals above. It's just easier on my brain to work out intervals above than below for some reason.
there's no dynamic markings in that list, it's all the same as what it was on the previous page, so that's all nice and easy. Um, well, that's a pain. Okay. So ideally, we can have three up on here, but we're not going to for now. So four is going to need its own voice. Gonna sound good. Nicely spaced brass. Have a listen just from that bit, this page. Okay. It still sounds so bottom heavy.
Struggling to say that, I believe. Let's see. I was just thinking as I was doing this, I'm going to look a right idiot if I'm not looking at what I'm doing and, and typing a load of nonsense. And lo and behold, let's try that again. So you see what it's done there with the upper strings. You've got the full first violin section on the upper note, half the seconds on the upper note, half a second on the lower note, and all the violas. So it's essentially you've got um, what you're going to have like 14, 20 odd violins on the top note, maybe uh, six on the bottom note, but also your 12 violas or however many you've got you know so those two notes are split across a much larger volume of um, violins and violas than you expect Sorry, that's going to stop in the middle of a phrase, but I want to play each page back so I can check for errors um, as I go. So let's go back to the beginning and listen to that all together.
You see what I mean by it sounding really bottom heavy though? Or is that just me? that. Lightning Jack. Never heard of it. I think the first Western I paid to see at the cinema might have been Maverick with uh, Mel Gibson, <laughs> I think. It's not really a genre I seek out, I have to say.
<laughs> Great minds. Got my sixth. Okay. Is that between two? Yes. Good. Okay. 
minus two because this one assume one is doing this. Sure is. Let's have a listen to the woodwind. Throwing that D flat in there, but okay. Uh, Three Amigos, I was thinking of earlier actually. I love that film. Um, another Elmer Bernstein score, I think. Uh, yeah. Galaxy Quest, another film I really like. I just like the silliness of Three Amigos. You know, <laughs> I always wanted to know how they managed to do the Invisible Swordsman. Um, <laughs> the puff of dust really dies. Definitely don't have three of you guys reference material there. Okay, 
Sorry about that. Um, okay, so then we have what? <laughs> what? Okay, that's an error. Um. We'll make a nice looking score and out of it yet. <laughs> um, right. It's going to get interesting. Ugh. Right. Let's do this. Good choice. Uh, Star Trek from Omni is a pretty big monster of a score. Not sure whether Independence Day is going to be quite as long as that. Um, it's going to be close though. Um, I've got um, more than 20% of the main score left to go and I'm already way beyond the page count for Iron Giant which is my biggest book so far and uh, that doesn't include any alternates there's almost another book's worth of alternate cues <laughs> so um, yeah it's going to be big 
um, so I have this workshop currency is mine and camera raw. I think you can see this. That's the pages in here for Independence Day. <laughs> uh, which way? That way. That's cool. I like to print it out uh, because um, it helps to visualize some things that you can't see on the page. But it's getting the, it's turning into quite a big old beast, <laughs> which is fun. Um, I think Star Trek 2 will come eventually. Synchrotones. Um, beyond that, um, Star Trek might go to other publishers. I'm not sure. Sometimes, you know. You know you don't want to get bogged down in one series. You know, you know um, Tim has done Batman and Batman Returns. And I doubt he will ever do the um, Golden Thor scores, for example. We'll see. I don't know if anyone's done any of, uh, or attended any of the ASMAC um, sort of online Zoom seminars before. Um, the uh, American Society for Music Arrangers and Composers. Uh, go to asmac.org, I think it is. Um, but uh, I've got one coming up in October, on October the 9th, where we're going to be looking at um, probably seven or eight cues from the Iron Giant in detail. Um, and that's going to be attended by um, Zoe Kamen and uh, Robert Elhai and Blake Neely and maybe some other people. We shall have to wait and see. Um, but that's going to be fun. 9th of October. Saturday. Um, that's going to be good fun if you're around for that. If anybody is attending the uh, um, conference on sci-fi film music at Rouen University um, at the end of September, um, I'm uh, doing a session for that as well, which will be fun, uh, talking about publishing aliens. That's a busy month, <laughs> busy couple of months. When is it not busy?
<laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. And it's free. <laughs> so, free to attend. Just sign up on their site. It's free membership. I mean, last night, for example, um, Tim from Omni Music uh, did a session um, with Joe Dante, uh, the director, and they looked at um, cues from Twilight Zone, the movie, and uh, Gremlins, which was good fun. session in uh, October on uh, Poltergeist as well. So he's got a busy month coming up. <laughs> Really weird um, dynamic placement in this. I've got a feeling that that piano should come in. There's a super jump. It's in the middle of the rest, which is not helpful. That's all good. Right. And that just gets G and B. So now we've got um, brass in. Let's have a listen again. Is a good one. Did you see that uh, the news that James Newton Howard is going to score the Willow series? Is it Netflix or no oh, Disney Plus? Yeah, Disney Plus series. Um, that would be amazing. And James is such an underrated. He's not underrated, but he's a. He's one of those composers that you don't think of immediately as one of the greats. Kind of like um, Michael Kamen, you know, he's a great composer, but you always think of um, mm, John Williams. I don't know that one. Yeah, thank you, Alexa. Um, <laughs> you always think of John Williams, James Horner, Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmer, you know, the big names like that, and you forget about James Newton Howard. But uh, exceptional composer. Really recommend his uh, Jungle Cruise soundtrack um, and uh, News of the World as well. It's amazing. Thank you. 
sometimes certain intervals remind me of different pieces and that just made me think of um, the opening theme to Thunderbirds. Little things please little minds. Should I just put that in totally in the wrong place? I think I did. Uh, what did I put in here? No, that's fine. Good. Uh, why do you want a friendly? Uh, arrange some of the links as well. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that I could potentially um, put Horn as Magnificent Seven into the mix for next week, but I don't know. Yes.
Right, okie dokie. Should we go back to the beginning, run the whole thing again? Oh, I think so. phrase to leave it. Um, let's see, where do we get to a little bit here? Hmm. Okay, um, I'm going to make this next page my last one because it's getting quite late. And it will get us kind of to the end of a phrase. So it's not sound like too bad. <laughs> a bit uncultured when it comes to westerns, unfortunately. Although, um, I mean, not really related, but um, it was really nice last night that I um, got to share you know, watching Independence Day with my daughter for the first time, because she's only seven, but you know, so it's a little bit sweary for her. Um, but it just didn't, I didn't say anything, and I think all that language went over her head, but she had an amazing time, she really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of getting to that period now where I can watch stuff with my kids and watch their reaction to seeing stuff for the first time, and occasionally, watch things for the first time for me. But uh, yeah, she just um, she overheard me working on the um, What's the queue called? Um, not the day we fight back. The virus upload queue. Um, and um, I said, Ooh, what's that? And I had the picture running on screen as well. So, um, so can I watch that with you? And we did. It was lovely. How about um, 
An American Tale 2, Five All Goes West. James Horner score, of course. Django Unchained. I think I might have something from that. Um, I don't know what else. Uh, once upon a time in the West, but I've already done that. Did the man with the harmonica. actually. Yeah, She's also reached the age where I can take her to the cinema and she'll make it all the way through a film. Um, I did take her when she was a bit younger and it was like, <laughs> I think she got up to go to the loo like five times or something in the space of an hour and then asked if we could go home <laughs> so we didn't even make it to the end of the movie um, but uh, yeah it's just definitely a bit more mature now Yes, she's seen the Princess Bride. <laughs> um, and she's seen Hook. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, kid-appropriate films. Um, I've exposed her to quite a lot of them um, from the sort of eighties, nineties. Um, uh, yeah, some of them, are, you know. It's kind of a bit too slow paced. Um, don't hold her attention. Like I tried it with um, Flight of the Navigator, she didn't enjoy that. And she's watched films like um, Inner Space, um, which I think she quite enjoyed. So it's, it's a bit hit or miss. Um, Explorers she's not seen. I've not seen Explorers. Um, know the score, don't know the film.
Yeah, Joe actually mentioned explorers last night. Um, we were talking about various schools that they worked on. Um, yeah, Matinee, I know. This is running into each other too much. I'm going to separate them. Okay, so there you go, I've separated out the bassoons because of what's going on in this line, it's just going to run into it and look horrible.
that's what it says. This is classic. Yep. Yeah, that uh, Goonies was a film I kind of grew up on. Oh, um, <laughs> just remembered another um, link with Eli Wallach, or however you pronounce his um, surname, um, which is I'm going to put in the mix for the uh, the score tournament. Um, of if you missed this, I, I'm, I've got so many potential links that I'm going to um, put everything into. Uh, tournament brackets essentially and we'll vote on those over the course of the coming week until we get down to the choice for what we're going to do next week. Uh, one of them, Eli played Mr. Freeze in the original 66 Batman uh, or that series and I've got um, Nelson Riddle's original Batman theme which would be kind of funny to do. <laughs> I'll uh, put it in the mix and see what happens. I'm uh, not sure it's going to stand up against um, some of the other Goldsmith scores and things like that that are going to be in the list, but who knows? I don't know if I've mentioned this on the stream before, um, but recently I, f I found this out and I was kind of horrified. You know how um, Arnie, Arnold Schwarzenegger was kind of um, ridiculed for his portrayal of Mr. Freeze, um, or he, he is now at least. Um, I didn't realise, but I was looking through um, for something about um, As Good As It Gets, which um, won the best score for that year. Um, and uh, Jack Nicholson won the best actor, but Arnold Schwarzenegger was nominated for best actor as Mr. Freeze. So, what do you know? Uh, that's right, Neil Hefty. Yep. Uh, you know, I've got the original manuscript for it. It's kind of cool. It's arranged by Nelson Riddle. 
Yeah, orchestrated uh, strength environment, yeah. That wasn't planned. <laughs> I mean, that was planned. Totally planned. Honest. Governor. like this. I'm just going to play that back from the beginning. Um, it's probably going to overrun, but I, I just need to take a quick break and I'll be right back. Comfort break, as they say.
Sorry about that. <clears throat> Anyone spot any bum notes? Um, <laughs> right, where were we? Um, trumpets, I think. Nothing doing reverse two cards there. Right, so I had trumpets split out like that. Didn't really need them split out anymore, so I'm going to do trumpets. That's gonna be hidden. It is going to be that.
cool. Right, okay. So then uh, we've got four finishing up there. Good. And let's line that in there. It's not working in the part school because just because. Okay. Um, I'm not going to play it back. I'm going to save it till the end. So I mean, it's not exactly going to be a surprise, but it'd be nice to hear. How it's all come together at the end. Good. We've got 
Okay, how many do we have? How many strings? It's quite funny, I'm um, making fixes to this score as I go, so um, certain things, markings left out and what have you. Hmm. I was just wondering whether to finish that phrase off on the next page, but it's a it's going to take me a bit too long, I think. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, so let's have a listen through and see what we've got. And um, maybe I'll pick this one up another time. Hang on a second. One cotton picking minute. Just, I just wanted to give you more, more screen, so you can see a bit more of the score. Full start. Pretend it didn't happen. A little bit better. There we go. It's always a shame when I can't finish a cue off and it's just left hanging. Um, but unfortunately, 
Yeah, I, I don't want to stick to short queues all the time, and uh, you know, it just means in the time allowed, I'll do as much as I can. Uh, and then maybe finish it off in my own time later on. Oh yeah, Silverado, Bruce Bourne, good one. Yeah. Good score, never seen the film. I'll take your quick for it. Well, there we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And as I said, I'm going to put um, voting options up on Facebook uh, from tomorrow and uh, we'll gradually whittle it down as we go through the week and uh, it'll be really interesting to see what we end up with next week because I have no idea maybe the, the Goldsmith fans will come out in force and we'll end up doing Happy On or it could be anything really um, or it could be the Williams fans come out in force and we're doing The Reavers, who knows um, so it's going to be fun. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please chuck a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. See you next time.